hello, hello, Robert hello. speaking. Hello, Robert speaking. Hello, Robert. It's Hugh. How oh, are you? Hello, hello, Hugh. How are you? Yes. Oh, not bad, not bad. We got cut off just now. Oh, I um, yeah, oh, I thought it was a salesman. I I had a, a call oh, no, no, no. and sorry, I went on to hold. <laughs> and I I went on to hold, Hugh. Sorry, sorry. That's all right. Okay. How are you keeping any out? Yeah, not too bad. It's uh, not raining today, so it's a fairly nice day. I'll be oh, going yes. out for my walk yes. soon. Yes. It's been quite nice for a couple of days. It's yeah. cold, but I'm um, not bad. Yes. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, uh, you mentioned that um, uh, the, it, um, in date here. Um, uh, uh, but you notice also in that script, it's first um, Peter 3, chapter 18. And it made, made a point that um, uh, that it's, it mentioned that Jesus Christ was raised up in the the flesh. It's two datives. So, it's in the flesh and in the spirit. But the text doesn't right. say he's raised as a spirit. Yeah, in the but, spirit okay. means that he's he he's been raised. By the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. That's how the New King James renders it. But it, yes, the text but, is not saying it, he's raised as a spirit. You see. Okay, but if you notice how the translation, what our translation says. Yes. The New English, the New, the New, he was raised up in the Spirit, not by the Spirit. That. Yes, because some Bibles render it. Um, by the Spirit, that's how the New King James, which I tend to use, I know has that. it. I know and that. other yes. Bibles would say in the Spirit. Yes. Um, but yes. it means so, the same thing. It means that yes. Christ is is risen up um, from, from the dead by the Holy Spirit. Um, there's no verse in the Bible, to my knowledge, that says Christ is risen from the dead as a Spirit. Right. Well, I I can't disagree with you that Christ was it was it, that it was the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ. So he yeah. was raised by Holy Spirit and is also raised in the Spirit. Yeah, I cannot deny that. I can't say that because it was certainly was written by Holy Spirit. Yeah, and at the same time, he was risen as a spirit. Well, there's no because verse that says he's risen as a spirit. Perhaps it would be best to sort of arrange a time to speak when we've both got a bit of time and okay, maybe fine, you can show me yeah. a verse that says Christ is risen as a spirit. Pardon? Perhaps if we if we arrange a time to speak yeah. when we've both got a little bit of time, um, uh -huh. you, you could then show me a verse that says Christ is risen as a spirit. Well, well I, if it's not if it's not written in the Bible, I can't show it because I can't go beyond what is written. Right. You know? Well, well, then the Bible does not the, say the, Christ is risen the, as the, a the spirit. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. but but, but it, it, yeah, but the Bible does not say that Christ was raised as a, in flesh. It doesn't say that. It doesn't. The script doesn't say Christ was raised in the flesh. Well, I think that the the Bible does say well, that. What, um, as I'm thinking, we didn't say that Christ. Nowhere in the Bible does say Christ was raised in the flesh. You know, just like how you're saying that no one can say that Christ was raised up, raised up in the spirit, or raised up as the spirit. Right. It's the same thing that, you know, we, we don't know where that the Bible says that Jesus Christ was raised up um, in the flesh, or as a fleshly person. Okay, well, I, I can't find those exact words, but I can find something yeah. similar if you would if you'd like me to do that. By the way, um, where is your con I, I got your details from the Charity Commission website. Where is your what's your congregation? I'm I'm based down here in Plymouth. I'm probably quite some way away from you in Plymouth, no. Plymouth in Devon. All right. That's oh, where I'm based. Looking, um, looking more near to you. Um, so, so what, what denomination are you, Robert? I don't go to any church. I gave up 10 years All ago. Right, sure. I used to be an okay. evangelical Christian, but I gave up because okay. of the total hypocrisy. But w w w which which um, I would have contacted you through the Charity Commission website, which goes by Jehovah's Witnesses Congregations. I forget which congregation you were. I'm London Welling. Pardon? London Welling. London Welling. Well, w e double l i n g congregation in London. That's correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. But you find several congregations in the Plymouth area. Well, they then they never answer the phone. Really? Yeah. <laughs> 
No. Okay, Robert, yeah. Well, you know, I'm quite willing to talk to you. If we can achieve something, Robert, because I don't want to just say uh, ways of our, you know, we need to have a goal. We need to know what, what to get out of this discussion. Okay. You know, it's not, it's not just a knowledge, because, you know, I serve Jehovah um, the best way I can, you know, and um, I try to live my life according to the scriptures, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm not here for debate or discussion because, you know, it's not going to get me anywhere. You know, as long as I, the scripture helped me to live a good and decent life, yeah. obedient to my Heavenly Father, uh, and that's my objective in life, you know, yes. that's all it is. Yes. Well, I and, serve Jehovah and I want to obey Jehovah's will and do the well, will of good. Jehovah. That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased for that. Mm -hmm. You know, because, um, He's a, he, you know, he's the one that um, uh, deserves our praise and worship. And he's the one who dictates how we should worship him. It's not where we worship him that matters. It's the way, he, the way that he approves of our worship. That's the most important thing. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, in, uh, I, I do believe, looking back on my time when I was attending church, we were taught yeah. that Jesus rose in the same body that he died in. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Well, you yeah. So, yeah. so but, Luke. But again, that's not possible, you see, because you remember with Lazarus. I was about to give you a quote. I was about to give you a quote. What says to Lazarus, his body must think, think by now, because we're dead for three days, four days. So, you know, his body will start to, to, to de de uh, decompose. I'm, so, I'm not talking yeah. about Lazarus, I'm talking about Jesus. I believe that Jesus that rose in the same if body he, he died in. Well, if it's flesh to body. The, the body would, uh, you know, even in, in the tomb for three, three days. So the, 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 the body would start to decompose, start to smell. So because in, that, in the Jewish time, the weather was very hot, and it was put in our tomb, so the body would start to um, deteriorate. So it could never possibly, you know, use the same body that he was put to death with. Um, well, um, there are certain scriptures I've looked at, John 2, Luke 24, 1 Timothy uh -huh. 2. Do you mind if I just go through those briefly, sir? Okay, no problem. Yep, okay, thank you. Um, the first is John chapter 2, verses okay, 19 to 22. Just a minute, let's have a look at that, please, Robert. Yeah, yeah, sure. And thank you for your time, by the way. It's all right, Robert. Not a problem. John chapter 2. Yeah. Verse 19 to verse 22. Um, okay. Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the yeah. Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. But okay. he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. So yeah. he says in verse 19, destroy this temple, temple being an idiomatic phrase referring to his, yeah. his body. Yeah. Destroy this yeah. temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews totally misunderstood him. They thought he was talking about That's the temple right. in Jerusalem. Yeah. But yeah. verse 21 yeah. is very significant. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Body yeah. is soma there. And when yeah. soma or body is applied to a human being, it always means a okay. physical body, never a body made out of spirit. Um, soma can be used in different ways in different contexts. It's applied to the planets and the stars in um, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, round right about verse 40, 42, somewhere oh. around, no, 30, 30 to 40, somewhere around there. But, yeah. um, of course, it's not being applied to human beings. And it's a singular. It says that Jesus rose in the same singular body that he died in. But but when I, um, then then in the next, next verse, verse 22, we find the context is the resurrection. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them and they believed the word and the scripture which Jesus had said. So the context is the resurrection and it's saying that Jesus is going to rise up after three days in the same body, singular, soma yeah. body, singular, that yeah. he died in. But right. when okay. I looked at your literature, because um, I before the lockdown I did have access to jw.org, I don't at the moment. Um, yeah. 
It said in your Insight in the Scriptures, Volume 2, page 785 to 786, that Jesus, after having risen as a spirit creature, he then manifested fleshly bodies, bodies being a plural, B-O-D-I-E-S, a plural. It would have been about it would have been about eight or nine fleshly bodies that he manifested. But here, body is a singular. It doesn't say he's going to manifest or rise up in the temple of his bodies, i.e., s. It's body in the singular in John okay. chapter two, verse twenty-one, sir. Okay. Yes. Well. Okay. That's fine. Right. So we know that um, what is this part that Jesus was referring to? It's very hard to hear you. You're you're breaking up a bit. Oh, right. So yeah, Jesus Christ. That's did, better. Did, um, yeah, Jesus Christ did, was raised up um, uh, right after three days. That is correct. And of course, he did use a body that resembled what he was put to death with, because as you can say, Thomas did recognise him because Thomas says, mm. says you know, unless I can um, uh, uh, put my thing in your body, I won't believe." So Jesus Christ. Did that for him. So yes, he did use the body. No, that, no, you yeah. used body in the singular twice. Your literature uses bodies in the in the plural. Yeah, that, that's plural. because you several occasions he, 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 he uh, 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 um, manifests himself on the seashore. He did. He used a different body. It was the same body he used um, when he was when he appeared to to Thomas. He no, used a different body. No. I yeah, thought I thought I heard you say body in the singular, but your literature, the insight in the scriptures, volume two, page seven hundred eighty-five, seven hundred eighty-six, yeah. says that he manifested different fleshly bodies, b o d i e s, which is a plural, on different occasions. And that is absolutely correct. That is absolutely correct because he did, on several occasions, he used different bodies to appear to his disciples. So you would claim that he rose as a spirit creature, but then he also manifested different fleshly bodies. Have I got that right? He used different fleshly bodies. As a spirit person, he used different fleshly bodies. So Jesus had never, ever again, once he was resurrected, he was never flesh anymore. He cannot be. He could never be flesh anymore. Well, hold on. No, I, I disagree with that, because at Luke 24... No, that's where we're going to disagree, Robert. What, what... He could never use... A... He could never resurrect to the flesh. Well, I can show you where he, where body. where he contradicts that. In in Luke well, twenty four, th yeah, in Luke twenty four thirty nine, he says, yeah. "It is I myself." I'll read the verse. Yeah. Luke chapter twenty four, yeah. verse thirty nine. Yeah. Behold my hands and my feet. So they yeah. had the marks of crucifixion in them. That it yeah. is I myself. Yeah. Handle me and see. For a spirit yeah. does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Yeah. So there is yeah. Jesus in the enclosed room appearing before his disciples. Yeah. He says that he has a body of flesh and bones, and he says, it is I yeah. myself. He doesn't yeah. say this is a projection of me, as you see a, a projection on a cinema screen. He says, this is I myself. Yeah. Behold my hands and my feet, because they had the marks of crucifixion, yeah. that it is I myself. Handle me and see, so check those marks to crucifixion, which prove yeah. that he rose up in the same body that he died in. And then he says, yeah. for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And then he showed them in the next verse, verse 40, his hands and his feet. But he rose up, he's in the room, in a body of flesh and bones. Yeah. And he says, it's I myself. Yes, yeah. I agree, I agree with it. So if Jesus appears as a spirit, who would see it? If he was a spirit, who would see it? Would you have to start with him as a spirit? He had to appear in a, as a flesh. It's not possible. They would not recognize him as a spirit. So it had to be in the flesh. Um, that's, it, why, that's why he manifests himself. In, he couldn't do it in the spirit because they would not recognize him. So he had to come back and take on a fleshly body in order for them to recognize him. Um, if he rose as a spirit creature, and you say that spirit creature obviously would not be omnipresent. Omnipresent means everywhere at the same time. You believe that that spirit creature is limited to one location, yes? Jesus can appear wherever he wants to. But he's not omnipresent. Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. 
Well, you say that Jehovah isn't omnipresent in the insight on the scripture book. So if Jehovah yeah. is not omnipresent, uh, uh, surely your literature says that Jesus, who's a created being in your literature, is not omnipresent. Right. So if if the spirit creature that rose from the dead is not omnipresent yeah. and if each of these it would have been seven or eight or nine different physical manifestations, these fleshly yeah. bodies that Jesus temporarily yeah. created, if yeah. they would not be omnipresent either, would they? But don't forget, to, uh, um, Robert, that he didn't uh, play four or five times at the same particular time. It was a different occasion. I'm that aware Jesus of that. Yes. Yes, yeah? I'm. I'm fully so, aware of that. Well, outside the. No the present, we're not told on the present uh, involved in that. Yeah, I'm. He's I'm fully. Person. I'm fully aware of that. But my question is this: If what yeah. I don't understand, you see, is if the spirit creature that rose from the dead is not omnipresent, and yeah. if those physical bodies are not omnipresent, then then did Jesus remain as a spirit creature each time he manifested those fleshly bodies? Or did he course, cease? Could I just finish? Was. Could I just finish? Yeah. Or did he cease being a spirit creature each time he manifested those fleshly bodies? Not possible. One the spirit is a spirit. So you can't come back to You can't um, say you're a fleshly human being again. I mean, ten, Sorry, ten, just, ten, just ten, go ten, through ten. that again more slowly. What, what are you saying? So we're saying that Jesus would already be a spirit. Yeah? Once he was erected, he was a spirit. But he's got the ability. I've just said that. Yes, I fully understand that. I fully understand that. My question is, because the spirit creature is not omnipresent, and because those fleshly bodies are not omnipresent, each time Jesus manifested a fleshly body, wouldn't you have two Jesuses? One Jesus is a spiritual Jesus in one location, and the other Jesus would be a physical Jesus in another location. Robert, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, your, your, your reasoning. It just don't make no, sense. No, I'm not, I'm not reasoning. I'm asking a question. Well, I mean, it don't, no, it doesn't make sense, Robert. That's not a question. How, well, can, uh, how can Jesus be two persons at the same time? It's, yeah, it's ridiculous, creatures. isn't it? It's completely ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Right, but, yeah, but you, claim, you claim that Jesus rose as a spirit. Yeah. That's in one location, a spirit creature in one location. Yeah. Then he manifested a physical body. And he couldn't indwell that physical body because your literature says that that's the Babylonish false doctrine of the soul or spirit taught by Christendom. So yeah. if you have this spirit Jesus in one location and then Jesus manifests a different fleshly body, for instance, at Luke twenty four thirty nine, he says, it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Wouldn't that mean that in Luke twenty four thirty nine you have a, a physical Jesus in one location and you have a spirit Jesus in a different location? Robert, let me just give an example. You know when the angel first took your position and came down to marry the woman of, uh, on the earth? There were spirit creatures living as human beings. Yeah? When the flood came, what did they do? They shed their flesh the body and went back into the spirit world. Right, so are you then, I, I, I get it, I get it. So are you then saying that Jesus rose as a spirit creature, outside the tomb he stopped being a spirit creature and he became a human, a human body of no, flesh? No, no, no let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish, let me finish, please. I'll start again. Are you saying that Jesus rose as a spirit creature, outside the tomb he stopped being a spirit creature, became a human creature, then became a spirit creature again, then there was another, I think, appearance outside the tomb. So he became a human being again. Then he became a spirit creature again. Then as a spirit creature, he went to the Emmaus Road. Then he became a human being, walked with his disciples. Then he became a spirit creature. He went into the enclosed room in Luke twenty four thirty six. Then he became a spirit creature again. Sorry, a fleshly creature again in verse 39, the verse I read, that he says uh, a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Then he became a spirit creature again. Then he went to the Sea of Galilee. Then he became a human. Uh, then he talked to his disciples and ate the fish. Then he became a spirit creature. Then he went to Jerusalem, to the hill. Then he became a human again, preached to the crowd. Then he became a spirit creature, and then he ascended up into heaven. Because you have to have one of those two positions. You have to adopt Robert, one of those two positions, surely. What I'm saying, and what my understanding is, 
each time Jesus Christ put on a fleshly body. I get it. I get it. I, I quoted the Watchtower reference to you. I get it. Each time he appeared to the Father, he put on, as a spirit creature, he put on a fleshly body. So he had various fleshly bodies. Just like a person put on a different suit of clothes. I get it. So he had different fleshly bodies. He had different fleshly bodies for different occasions. He just put fleshly bodies on as a spirit creature. So he remained as a spirit creature whilst at the same time he manifested those fleshly bodies because you said it's like putting on a coat. He didn't stop being a... Are you saying... No, he's not stopped. He cannot stop being a... Creature, right, so he is right. So Jesus is a spirit creature, and like putting on a coat. In fact, I put my coat on because I was about to pop out <laughs> until you called. But thank you for calling. So I'm actually wearing my coat. Um, um, so you're saying that Jesus remained because I'm only interested in the 40 days post resurrection. That's all I'm interested in. I'm not interested in anything else. So Jesus rose as a spirit creature. And then on about eight or nine occasions for those 40 days post-resurrection, he created a separate to him physical body, which no, he did not indwell. Yeah, he, he just put on a, 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 a flesh body in order for his to have to recognise. Yes. And from what I've learned is that spirit creature has got the ability to do that. And, and he, that physical body would be separate to the spirit creature. Right. So, therefore, wouldn't you have two Jesuses in two different locations? No, no, let me no, let me finish. No. You have the spirit no. Jesus in one location, and you have the no. physical Jesus in another location. No. Why not? Physical Jesus was before he put to death. Sorry. So you cannot have a physical Jesus was no longer a physical man. You've just Jesus you've just contradicted man. yourself. No you've just contradicted yourself. You said that Jesus manifested fleshly bodies post resurrection yes. about eight or nine yes. so therefore you have jesus existing in two different ways in two different locations you have a spirit jesus in one location you have a fleshly jesus in another location take luke 24 39 for example behold my hands and my feet that it is i myself this is jesus appearing before them in the room handle me and see so they can feel the marks of crucifixion in his physical body you can't feel the marks of crucifixion you can't handle a spirit and then jesus says for a spirit does not the context is not have flesh and bones as you see i have now jesus says in verse 39 it's i myself he doesn't say it's a manifestation of me. He says it's I myself and he's appeared before them in a body of flesh and bones, which has the marks of crucifixion in his physical body, because the spirit body is not going to have the marks of crucifixion. So here is a physical Jesus appearing before his disciples. Now, you've said that Jesus created these physical bodies like putting on a coat. That would mean you have a spirit Jesus existing simultaneously to this, but in a different physical location because both are not omnipresent the spirit creature is not omnipresent which means everywhere at the same time and the physical body certainly isn't omnipresent meaning everywhere at the same time so you would have two jesuses and by the way i've spoken to another jehovah's witness yesterday and he said the complete opposite to you he said that jesus stopped being a spirit each time he manifested those fleshly bodies. It seems that one Jehovah's Witness gives one answer and another Jehovah's Witness gives another answer, but you don't really know what is the official teaching of your religion. I can't hear you. you you're breaking up. You, you need to start again. I, I can't hear you. You need to start again. Maybe speak closer to the phone. That's it. So, so Robert, your game is to go around and try to try and um, flush out flush out Jehovah's Witnesses, ask different questions, uh, try to win a point. Are you? Is that, I, your, is that your objective? No, I'm trying to understand what is your position I, I on the resurrection. You know, you're not trying to understand. I'm trying I don't to. Think I, you are. I'm, I don't think you are. I'm but trying to understand. Just prove a point. Um, I'm, I, you're just trying to prove a point, Peter. So I don't think we're going to continue this conversation. What are you yeah, afraid of? We're Come not on. Get anywhere with this. What we're are you afraid of? Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. We're, we're both adult. We're both can, adult I men. Your, I can see your game. The same thing that um, the tribe of the forest tried, tried to do Jesus Christ. I tried to trick him. I'm not trying to <laughs> trick want, you. They don't want to learn anything from Jesus. They just want to prove a point. I, I mean, I'm not here to prove any point. I've got the truth, and I've not got the truth. So I don't need to prove anything to you, Robert. 
then I mean, why can't you answer a simple question on Jesus' resurrection? But, but, the resurrection and I'm is... Telling you, I'm telling you, I understand that Jesus Christ had the, 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 the ability to use different form, appear in different form as a first, first creature. So I can say, he's got the ability to appear in different forms. So you have creature. multiple but, Jesuses. You have a spirit um, Jesus in one location and then a physical Jesus in another location. Because you cannot have in Jehovah's that's Witness yours, theology... Not, that's yours, not mine. I, I was yours, trying to speak. That's mine. So I allow you to continue to think the way you are, but, you know, my understanding of the scripture... Once you're no, I'm not interested in your understanding. I'm not, no, I'm not yeah. interested in your understanding. I'm interested in no, what is the official position of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. No, 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 and nobody God, knows what it is. I, I cannot give you the position of the Watchtower. I give you the position because each one, each Jehovah's Witnesses are on their own. You know, we don't, we don't, um, uh, we're not a uh, Watchtower. Um, uh, we are Jehovah's Witnesses. And in the, in the ability, we think differently. We think we yeah. think because we're we're own person. Like the we're, Borg. We're not, we're not we're not we're not robots, we're not puppets. You're we're like the Borg. Our own salvation. You're like the Borg. We're all responsible for our own salvation. Yeah. So you can you can go around from Jehovah's Witnesses to Jehovah's Witnesses. Each but, one they don't they're not the Watchtower Society. They're Jehovah's Witnesses as individual. Okay? So each one can say what they believe in and that's their belief. And they respond to to Jehovah. They answer over to Jehovah and Jesus Christ. We're not answering to the Watchtower. But most of them don't know what they believe. Well, well they they, well, they really well, don't. It's just opinion. like the evangelical Christians. They make it up as they go along. They don't really know what they're not, talking about. Yeah, it's not the knowledge that matters. It's just sincerity. It's your obedience to the command of Jesus Christ. It's a living harmony. You know oh. what Jesus says. He made the the wise and the intellectual of the Polish thing. But he take the, the meek and humble person, teach them. And yeah. we don't have to be, we don't have to be scientists, we don't have to be, you know, to, to be Jehovah's Witness. As long as we are faithful, as long as we are loyal, as long as we are obedient, that is the key. We don't right, but, well, Mormons, are very, Mormons are, are very loyal. Mormons are very loyal. Mormons are very humble. Mormons are very sincere. Does that mean that the Mormon religion is true? Well, that's the, that's the opinion. I don't speak for the moment. What about the Seventh-day Adventists? They're very sincere. They're very the loyal. Mind. They're very honest. I don't speak for them. They're very I humble. I do not speak for them. Well, I do not speak for them. I don't know. I don't speak for them. I speak for them as myself, as you, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, Isaiah yeah. chapter 8, verse 20 says, To the law and to the testimony, if they agree not with this word, it is because there is no light in them. So we're to agree with the Bible, and the resurrection of Christ is central to the Bible. I mean, take 1 Timothy 2, 5. Christ there, uh, the, Paul is writing 30 years post-resurrection. He's writing in the late, late 50s. He calls Christ the man Christ Jesus. Now, he doesn't call him the spirit creature. He calls him the man, and the tenses right. come from verse 4, where they're present tense i'll read from 1 timothy 2 4 who desires all men to be saved present tense and to come to the knowledge of the truth present tense for there is one god present tense and one mediator between god and men present tense the man christ jesus present tense so christ is called the man anthropos man in 1 timothy 2 5 30 years after his resurrection why is paul calling him a man if he's no longer a man if he's now a spirit creature can I ask you a question, Robert? Yeah. With all this knowledge you acquire, what are you doing with it? You know, are you are you following Jesus' command to preach and teach the good news of the kingdom? What good news yes. have you got to share with people? Yes. I what? mean, you seem to be you seem to be raising point after point, objection after objection, all negative stuff. You know, what's the purpose of it? Well, actually, you it's know, very positive. Jesus Christ... Christ said, "The good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the of the earth, for witness to all the nations." And then will come the love of Christ that we should love our neighbors and ourselves. By this, you'll know that you are my disciples if you have love among yourself. So, a loving person wouldn't we try to criticize, wouldn't we try to, to put down other people? They'd encourage him to help people to serve, serve God faithfully. But your objective, it seems to me, 
is to try and find as many sound, as many objectives as possible, just to satisfy your own desire and curiosity, to prove that you're right and never wrong. And of course, you, know, you never do I, that going door to door, do you? You never knock on people's door and tell them that their Catholic religion or their Pentecostal religion is true. In fact, you join hands and you pray with the Catholics and the Pentecostals, don't you? Or do you tell uh, Catholics and Pentecostals when you go door to door that they are wrong? We try to encourage people to, to live by the Bible, Robert. Ah, <laughs> double talk, double speak, not giving me an honest answer. Yeah, can, you tell these people that hey, they're wrong. I've got to go now. Thank you oh, don't run away. I wanted to go Thank to Acts 17.31. Don't run away. Come on, don't run away. <laughs>